If we think of, of the problem of our dependence upon the global food distribution network, and this is something which has come about without anybody intending it. It's come about from the opportunities available to supermarkets and from, from, from the hidden subsidies that are offered to supermarkets by governments, you know, free roads, a planning permission that permits them to develop these enormous warehouses. Supermarkets are a kind of uh, scam, really. I mean, they're, uh, they're a fully subsidised form of food distribution, uh, which externalises many of its costs onto future generations without any recompense. And, uh, you know, that they are the enemy. But everybody loves them because they can go to the supermarket and get everything you want. It's, you, you go back to your hunter-gatherer state of mind, picking things off the shelf, you come away with a smile on your face. So it's a big problem, you know, about motivation. But at, at a certain point, of course, um, this distribution network will collapse. And this is where we have to, where we have to start thinking, you know, OK, how do we bring back that local food economy? the political economies of the future will be essentially local. They will use locally generated energy and local land and materials producing for local consumption. This local lean economy will be shaped by a rich, earthy mixture of reciprocities and culture. Localization stands at best at the limits of practical possibility, but it has the decisive argument in its favor that there will be no alternative. In our entire history, we grew up connected to the sources of our food, connected in a way that meant that we also understood that food production was and must be at the center of every economy. And the, the celebrations around the harvest, around the feast of coming together to enjoy the, the fruits of those labors, for the harvest of gardens and allotments, for earthy roots, for crackling cabbage, for hanging beans and striped courgette, we give thanks. For the harvest of local hedgerows, for the struggling bramble, the black showers of elderberry, the mushrooms nesting in the dewy grass. For the friends made and support given, for people with whom to laugh and with whom to weep, we give thanks. Yeah. Blessings on the meal. Yeah. 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 So the idea is to make food as local as possible. So you can't get something more local than this because basically all of that is from the field. Chickens have laid these eggs over there. Uh, these beetroots, carrots, um, cucumber, all of that is from what we produced. So we wanted to celebrate um, harvesting, bounty, and um, enjoy and eat in the field what was produced in the field. I think it's very much about improving environmental sustainability and locality of food. And obviously we can grow our food in a very ecological way and try and work as much with nature as possible, uh, rather than relying on larger industrial scale agriculture to feed us. And so I think part of the programme is trying to train up the growers of the future to kind of spread smaller scale local growing to other places. This kind of lean economy, as David Fleming described it, has also been called the economics of happiness. For, for us, the economics of happiness is an invitation to exactly the lean economy, to the local economy that David talks about. And it's the perfect phrase for us because it makes it very clear that at the deepest level, this is about our own well-being. And I believe that today, as people are feeling overwhelmed and depressed, uh, it's incredibly em empowering to be able to share a message like David's, that there is a path that we can embark on right now that can, even with the madness surrounding us, start to heal ourselves, our souls, start to help us to connect with life in a way that leads to, uh, that is energizing, inspiring, and hopeful.